Hello, hello, how's everyone? Hey guys. Hi. Hey, how's everyone? Happy holidays to everyone that is watching. Happy holidays to Jane Lee and Aaron Simmons. My name is Jamil Medina. Uh, we have Jane, uh, Jane Lee. She is from the Best Live uh, community. Turn the quick, quick. Um, um, she she's joined us uh, today to talk about holiday data. She's a solution architect as Best Live. She also have a she also hosts a program um, show similar to this one called Bislip Happy Hours. So I recommend everyone to to look at uh, Jane Lee on on LinkedIn and follow her and and their people over there at, at Bislip. They're doing great content and um, very good friend of us. And you know definitely recommended their Happy Hour uh, sessions. They're great for data visualization and anything that you want to learn about data visualization. They also have great content over there. So if you're first time uh, showing, uh, being here on the show with us, please know that this is a Mr. Chart show. Uh, we present visualizations, and the idea is that each one of us has a visualization that we not, have not seen before. This is going to be the first time that we've seen these visualizations, and the idea for us is to look at different perspectives, how we look at these visualizations, how we can understand how they were made, and if we can actually provide some helpful insights of how to make them better. Uh, we try to recreate the business environment, right? When you go to a business meeting and you've never seen a visualization before, what is your first impression? What, it, what, what it is confusing about the data visualization that you're looking at? And how can you make it better? So one of the things that we wanted to do today that I wanted to do is I wanted to show you one visualization that I did a couple of years ago. And since Jane and, and Aaron have so many visualizations that they're going to show today, I'm going to quickly look at something different today. So I'm going to show you one of my visualizations. Um, and let me see real quick here. Um, go here real quick. So what you have here is something that I wanted to talk to everyone about is you can actually take almost any VI tool, you know, like Tableau, Power BI, Click, and create your own business, uh, business uh, Christmas card. So this is a Christmas card that I created on my own. And I thought that it was cool to present it, to give you, you know, some something, some idea, something that you can do on your own. And this was very, very simple. I just put this together in Excel. It took me like 15 minutes to put together a couple of columns and I created this visualization. And the idea here is that you can see it has my name because it's reading my name out of the server as a user. So when everybody receives this visualization, or when they open it, it will say, hey, Aaron, uh, may your new year see a significant increase in all the good stuff. Or it will say, Jane, uh, may your new year see a significant increase. So that's one of the cool things that you can do. We wanted to show you something that uh, it will be something cool that you can do your own. Um, I'm going to show you another, I, another one here so you can see a little bit larger. Hopefully, let me see. I'm going to share here so so you guys can see how it looks and this is something that you can create for your home team right you, you can send this on an email or you can let people log into your server you can put you know underneath you can say put my name uh i say happy holidays from data meaning uh but this is just an idea that i wanted to bring to anyone that is watching that you can use uh in your team that you can do something cool different this also helps with adoption because if people see that you're the tool that you're using, uh, you know, you can do other things with it other than uh, reports. I think this is something very helpful. Do you, what do you think, Jane, about this visualization? Uh, it's a little bit confusing. Oh, um, it's confusing. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know, uh, I don't really know what it's saying. Like grumps, it, did it go to 20? Did it go down by 20? Yeah, so it, um, it's, me, it's pretty much saying like, hope that you prove that you have pure joy next year so this year and next year so this you see this is like slope chart and it's saying like hey pure joy hopefully that pure joy will increase in the future that you have more goodwill more cheer and you know when, when you feel grumpy or or you don't feel good about it that that will go down next year so that's what it pretty much is it saying it's just uh it's just like a christmas card okay i see yeah i think I think it is cool, but maybe there would be a better way to represent this because as soon as you mm -hmm. see lines and you see the 
the yeah. little baubles at the end, you're thinking, okay, this is the beginning, this is the end, yes. and this is telling me something. This is, you know, this is like raw data and it's telling me something rather exactly. than just saying, you know, look at the increases of, of joy, goodwill, and cheer, and then grumps is going down. Exactly. So what do you think, Aaron? This is a good, this is a good idea for like just promoting your, your data visualization tool or helping out, uh, you know, so others. We, uh, we've talked about this before of uh, creating things that are personalized to the people that are mm -hmm. looking at it. And uh, we get, you know, our home, we get Christmas cards from, from out of out of state people. And it's, it's just the generic card with nothing but their signature on it. That doesn't, that's not real personable that I don't have a lot of connection with those, but when I get something that's got my name or a special message for me, I'm a little more interested in what it is. So uh, I, I just like the fact that, that you can create something in BI tools uh, that is personable to that person. So instead of it's just being another graph, it's like, oh, it's got my name in it. Uh, they they think that it's it's been personalized specifically for them and, and you put a lot of work and time into it when in reality you've automated it. So it's much easier for you to send out these to, to a lot of people. Exactly. So yeah, the, the idea here, you know, was pretty much uh, creating something that can be shared with uh, the people within your company and, and some people that are actually part of your, maybe your user group within your company or people that are just part of the individuals that are like champions that use your BI tool within the company and just creating something funny or cool that you can share with them to show them that in addition to your BI tool to, that creates reports or dashboards, that you're able to create something different and that is cool for, for Christmas, for example. But you can also really create this for any holiday, right? Uh, this is kind of like a business car, uh, like Christmas car in this case. And you can actually change this Christmas car and make it very easily personalized, like Aaron said, to those individuals. And that was the, the main idea. And then it could say underneath, for example, when I used this before, my other company, we used this and we actually used the department name underneath and said and send it to other departments within the company and said, hey, uh, just uh, this is just a uh, Christmas card for the, I don't know, marketing department, for example. So that's one of the things that we did uh, that I wanted to share with the audience that you can do, uh, that it will help you probably to increase adoption because people can see, oh my God, if this, this BI tool can do something like this, just imagine how great the dashboards that you can make. So um, it says, it is nice, easy way to show users that personalized is possible, just the beginning. So this is uh, someone from the, from the audience that uh, gave us that answer. And I see that Ray, Ray uh, Gibbler is with us. He has great content. Please check everybody, check Ray link and LinkedIn, join him, uh, follow him, amazing content. Thank you, Ray, for being with us here. And we have Trent, Trinson Marks. He said, can we see the specific piece? Is that how you will recommend doing role level security? Um, yeah, that will be probably another conversation because um, we probably don't have enough time to do that. But I, I agree with you. That's a great idea for showing role level security. Um, and this says, I guess to clarify the ask, you mentioned the user's name will show based on who is logged into using Tableau. How does that work? So there is um, there is a um, function in Tableau called username that I use. And it's just reading whatever it is in the server as their login name. Uh, you just look for functions and look for users, and you will see one that it's uh, available for that. Uh, but if you want to uh, join, um, find me on LinkedIn or send me an email, and I will show you. It's not, not really difficult. Um, so anyway, I just wanted to show everyone that, uh, let's start with, um, Jane, what do you have? Let's just, uh, I just wanted to give it somebody, uh, some helpful, uh, ideas for the, what you can do, uh, with some of your BI tools or anything. Uh, but let's start with Jane and see what she got. Okay. Sounds good. Okay, cool. So this is actually something I found on Reddit. Um, mm -hmm. I don't know if you guys like Reddit. There's a yeah. great, uh, Thread, yeah, I think it's called Thread mm -hmm. Channel. I don't use Reddit that often, but <laughs> there's a, a great place you could go. It's called Data is Beautiful, and then you can okay, find yeah. a lot of good things on there. 
but also uh, sometimes you, you'll see things and you're like, mm, is that really helpful? I don't really know. Uh, here's one. It's about Christmas injuries and they're using kind of like a bar chart, but they're using ornaments to show. And um, yeah, I just brought it up because I, to me, it's a little bit confusing. It's a little bit unclear where the bar ends and there's a lot going on. Uh, yeah, I, yeah, I like the I like that it's uh, it's to me this this they're not really trying to you know be real specific on where those lines are. I think it's just they wanted to try to make it a, a, a holiday story uh, with using holiday type things with the Christmas tree and the light bulbs and uh, I, I think it's 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 good for what I think they're trying to just tell that story of is that that non electric decorations. Is far and above uh, more more injuries there than anywhere else. Yeah, I uh, definitely agreed. I think the number one thing that I don't like is that for non electronic injuries, uh, the ornament there's like a long red, a long red line. And then when I saw that, I like I thought you know I thought the the bar ended where the ornament ended, but it actually ends where the line is. I think that you know it could have been changed. Um, but overall, I think it's fun and it, it is festive. What do you think, Emil? I, I think it's really cool to see the ladder. I mean, how they use the ladder. I never thought, you know, there will be so many injuries. Um, I think the, the maybe the scale, right? It's hard to, to see because there's no scales on the left and they're just so close, all the images one to the other. Um, but overall, I do like what they selected, right? As uh, some of the images, it just gets it to you really fast. Um, I think I they like could have, the title. Ho, 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 ho. <laughs> I like the title. I, I think they could have maybe added a little more context to this mm -hmm. um, without making it all all too too much bigger. Here is so this is from the years twenty twenty. I'm sorry, twenty ten to twenty nineteen. So there's a nine ten year range in there. It'd be nice to know how those have trended over that period of time. So if they just had a just a small box underneath each one of those of how that, you know, maybe a spark line just to see, you know, is, is one going is going way down and is one going way up? Um, just a, I always like seeing trends as often as I can. Yeah, I agree. I think uh, there is definitely a lot of good data here. It does come from the U.S. Consumer Product mm -hmm. Safety Commission uh oh, office yeah. like bureau uh -huh. uh, so i'm sure they do have yearly trends i think yeah, yeah there's a there's a lot you could have done with this not you but what they could have done with this and um yeah i think overall i like it the scale just kind of throws me off like the width of the bars and everything mm -hmm. but um it is fun i do think it, it is a fun chart and it gets people excited about data you know, this this could be game like um, this could be your KPIs on top, right? And I think that it just needs more information, right? But it just kind of like it could be the start. Like if you could put like if I if I were gonna use this, I will use all of this on top, right? Of my dashboard, all on the top. So uh, 80, 89, like high level KPIs, and then start developing then other graphs underneath to show a. Hey, What's going on with electrical decoration? What's going on with ladders? And then going more into it, I think that that will be kind of fun. But it's just a good start, I think. It's a good start. Yeah, um, yeah. I mean, I saw a comment here that says it's fun. Probably not one for the boardroom. I agree, Dustin. Correct. So I got um, I got here Ray saying, like the panelist said, I think it's okay for what it is, but I probably wouldn't use multiple icons in the business dashboard. It's comparing across dimensions. It's really important. That's right. And I say- um, um, It's the perfect thing. Reddit. It's the perfect Reddit chart. You know, it gets people mm -hmm. interested. It's fun. It's eye-catching. Mm -hmm. But yeah, I, I think we can learn from what not to do and also- Exactly. You know, yeah. So it's who the audience is for. You know, right. If it's for Reddit, this is great. Yes. If it's for a boardroom and not so much. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Exactly. So you said you have another one, right? You should, so Jane is going to show us another one, which is really, really cool. This one is uh, fun. It's colorful. 
if you have epilepsy, you might want to look away. Don't I didn't warn you. <laughs> okay, cool. Ah, okay. <laughs> it's Very a lot nice. of fun. It's a lot of colors. Um, yeah, I mean, first glance, there's a lot going on. Mm -hmm. I see Comic Sans in there. I don't know how people feel about Comic Sans. Yeah. Me, I think it's funny sometimes, but... So where, a... where do you found this one, uh, Jane? Where do you got it from? Uh, it's actually a Vizlib Xmas, Xmix oh, okay. app. Okay. And uh, this is about all the songs uh, mm -hmm. that have trended over the years. Yeah, look at the car carrying the Christmas tree running along the bottom. It This is actually an extension, and it's only out for the week of, sorry, not the week, the month of December. Um, it's a Vizlib extension. But yeah, it just adds everything. It just adds a fun little, little, uh, what's the word? Feature animation? On, yeah, animation yeah. on top animation. of the apps. And mm -hmm. it just makes things fun. But I do think it is a little confusing. I did not make this app. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah, I'd love to hear your true opinions on it. I, I, I like the the animation for this reason. Uh, some animations, you know, Jane, could become confusing or overwhelmed, right? Mm -hmm. But what I like here is there is not a lot of things that are overwhelmed to me. Like, it's going, you know, all the things are going down and moving, but it's not overwhelmed. So that's that I like, right? It's an animation that you can digest, right? You, it's, it's good. Okay, it's good. I mean, I think that's one of the things that we can learn about data visualization when you're using animation is try not to be to do too much or like to, for the animations to become something that it takes away some of the insights. In this case, for me, it's fine. You know, it, it's not horrible. It's not like an animation that it will take so much of my eyes, uh, attention. And it's and I can still read everything, right? Because probably because it's going is is wide going down and the the car is going across. Uh, but it, it's just I think it's the right timing on 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 the animation, so I kind of I kind of like it. Um, I think this on the left side, all this may take too much space, right? It's just the different fonts. Uh, it probably takes too much space. Um, what do you think, Aaron, about the colors or underneath or anything else that? Okay, first like first off, uh, Jane, what I'd like you to do is the next time that car come across, click on it. <laughs> So I don't know if anybody else did that, but you get a little special message when, when you actually click on the animation. Oh, oh you didn't get it? I, oh, I got it. It says, uh, Mary, it says Mary x Yeah, on the, on the top of mind, it actually has, gives you a message. Uh, I thought that was kind of kind of a fun little ad there. Um, mm -hmm. So uh, for me, at, at first glance here, it's a lot of red. I know we're mm -hmm. talking Christmas, uh, but I'm, I'm wondering if, just like the left-hand side, there's huge blocks of text that are all in red. Um, it's just a, there's a lot going on, and then you've got the red bars at the top, and you got the red area chart, and then a lot of colors down there for the numbered list. So f for me, there's just a lot of lot of colors going on. Uh, I, I I like also like the animation of the snowflakes coming down because I've never mm -hmm. seen anything else like that, mm -hmm, and mm -hmm. I, I like that that's not real overwhelming, but it adds mm -hmm. a little holiday holiday nest to to what we're looking at here. Uh, and, and Jane, if you could do this for me, because I, maybe I'm, mine's not working right. Uh, for the the bar chart at the top, can you click on mm -hmm. the, the 13 for the for the 50? The 13, yes. Yeah, yeah, that one. So on the left hand side, it gives us it's supposed to give us all of them, but I can't scroll down on that list. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think it's locked right now. Uh... Okay. I, I didn't know if that was something with mine or, or if I had some kind of setting on. So. Well... Sure. We have a we have from the chat Ray. He's saying, "What is the meaning of the colors in the lower right?" And he found the meaning is uh, different songs by the same artist. Okay. Um, yeah, I think the use of color isn't so great. Um, and I personally, I wouldn't have added the numbers in here because mm -hmm. uh, you know number of appearances by artists. Ariana Grande appeared twice. Mm -hmm. I don't know why there's like there's two different colored bars for, mm -hmm. for one mm -hmm. person. Uh, to me, that seems a little strange. And also, you know, like there's this green shows up three times. 
what mm. what is are they singing the same song like well, yeah the the colors used here kind of don't make sense and i don't know about you guys but when mm. i started bi dashboarding i was always told like stay away from red because people yes. always associate red with like no or negative so Correct. use it You're to right you know, yeah use it to decorate but don't use it as a a main color so, a main color correct because yeah. it could mean something wrong or something bad when in reality it, it is not, right? Yeah. And actually, you don't need it here because you, it can be a white background and on all of this, and it, it still looks good. It still looks like Christmas, right? So you don't really need that. The same thing with where it says number of appearance by year, the second graph is also red. And why is it that? Because it's not... It's not telling me that it, it's not wrong. I mean, it's just a, a graph, you know, over time. Um, so you, you, you're right. I I, also, I, go ahead. Yeah, I had, I had two other questions. When I like first came into this and I, I was clicking around and I think I filled in too many times. So I just like refreshed the page. It looks like it, it's defaulted to a selection. Um, Jingle Bell Rocks is look, looks like what it's defaulted to. So I didn't know if, you know, if it's possible to start with a, with an all category or a, uh, you know, make sure you select a, a, a certain artist if you want to see that information. So that threw me off a little bit because I wasn't sure what I was looking at without ever clicking on anything. Mm -hmm. and the, the, the two other things I noticed was uh, on the left hand side, it's got total appearances for all songs. And below that, it's a box for total appearances. Mm -hmm. Well, total, total appearance, the total isn't capitalized. And the P's, the bottom of the P's are cut off and the bottom of the G's are cut off in that bottom section. So it just mm -hmm. looks like that needs to be spaced out just a little bit so that you can get the, all that lettering in there. Or you can make the font a little smaller. Exactly. But I do I do like that it's got a lot of information. Uh, I like that it's, it is it is themed to the holidays. Um, it took me a second to understand we were talking about songs here until somebody had mentioned mm -hmm. it. So, yeah, it, it, it needs a better title, right? I think uh, a main title that says this is about songs. Uh, because it says, did you know, do you know what? <laughs> so, I mean, it's just like, did you know the mu uh, who is the number one, I don't know, music song during this time or whatever, the Christmas season, something like that, right? Like a better title could be very helpful. Um, actually, the title is there. Now I see it. It's just not big enough. It says 68 years of Christmas songs. It says there on top of all performance. Right here. Yeah, it's just not big enough. Okay. Yeah, it is there. It was just yeah. not big enough. Yeah. Okay. And it tells you 68 years. You know, the data contains 68 years of Christmas songs. That's great. I just won't make it larger. <laughs> um, yeah. Let's see what else. What else is there? What else will you make? Anybody on the chat? What else uh, you guys will change to make it better? What color? Uh, would you like to, to see better than this this color? So, um, I know a lot yes. of people said about the font. Yes, mm -hmm. Tito, Tito, who was on the, the show last week. Hey, Tito. Uh, he, he asked, uh, or he, he mentioned that there's a lot of different font sizes. You know, does okay. that mean something or does that not? I don't think so. Yeah, I, I think, think if like a UX designer saw this, they would just freak out. They'd be like, well, <laughs> what's all the different fonts? What are, what are all the different sizes? Why is it caps? Why are all the songs in caps? Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, definitely all the colors underneath are hard to to read, right? It does have that that uh, that semi personalization feel, you know, when you it's got it's got anytime you click on something, it that changes that text and um, so, so having that, that personalization of that interacts with what you want to do, it filters to what you want to do. Um, I think that would, that help people digest it. So I, I like that point. Okay. Does it have any sound or not? I, I no, thought, no, no, no. Okay. Right, that was I me. Thought, oh, cool. <laughs> yeah. So, um, no, it, it looks cool. It looks cool. I mean, I, I think it would, I would just change, like I said, some of the fonts. Um, it's a, okay. Let me see somebody from the chat. Let's say uh, all cast for the song. Does that mean they're yelling at me? Yes. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Jingle bell rock. <laughs> yes. <laughs> 
But I think that, you know, definitely this is something, I mean, what I do like about this is the data. It seems really cool to do a read on. And that is something that uh, they can definitely be done with this data, right? You can definitely make it better and it will look great. I'm pretty sure it will look really nice. I, I have one more thing about the, the number of appearances by year. Uh, mm -hmm. I, I noticed only because I was trying to see if there was anything below this page. I tried to scroll down and, and then I have like, okay, I didn't do anything. So I scrolled back up on my mouse and it zoomed in. So I didn't know you could do that. Uh, mm -hmm. For this context, not useful, but I could see that being helpful if you had the entire data set of 60 years by month or by week, and you wanted to see it, you see a, a spike somewhere, you could you could just scroll in and zoom into that spot so you can see those weeks a little clearer and see which week it was. So I could see that nice. being helpful if you had that, that kind of data being displayed. Very nice. I like it. I like that those features. Yes. Those features are really good. Thank you, Jane, this is great. Yeah, thanks for uh, critiques. Oh yeah, perfect. Thank you so much. Um, I know that Aaron has a couple of visualizations he's gonna show us. So Aaron, you wanted to show yours, and I think that people will really be enjoy. Um, did you have any? Did you have any? Emil, did you have any others you wanted to go through? No, 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 no. Because I knew that you guys have many, so I just wanted to bring one, um, and just to give some ideas of what you can do, and and to push everyone to like just create you know, some new new things that you can do with any visualization that you have. Just go up there and, and create your own uh, Christmas cards. You can do that, it will be nice. People will appreciate that. Uh, great feedback that we I got last year from that. So pretty sure anybody will. Okay. All right, can you see? Yeah. Um, all right, so uh, I have one, two, three, four, maybe five, I'm not sure. I uh, don't need to go deep diving into all of them, but I just wanted to show a couple of, uh, like I, uh, when we start, first started the show email, it was just like, you bring one chart and we talk about it for an hour. I, I, I tend to, I, I get deep in the weeds and I'm like, yeah, but this one's awesome and this one's awesome. So I've been, mm -hmm. every week I've been bringing more and more and more here. Uh, so please feel to just stop me from talking if, if I get going too fast here. Okay. So I've got this uh, happy holidays one. And I'll tell you why I like this, because uh, like the animations that we just saw from Jane's, it brings in an element outside of, you know, what that tool really is or what it's really for. So uh, on this one, we're looking at songs, I believe, as well, although it's not all that, all that clear. But uh, so it says, you know, click or hover. So we've got now that you can see when you kind of do that, you can't really see what's underneath. Um, it's kind of it's kind of hidden. It's kind of dark. But in the tooltip there, you can see specifically what they wanted you to see for that data point. And what I thought was was interesting was when you let me find one I actually know. Uh, yeah, I don't know this one, but I know that name. Okay, so when I when I click on that down here, it it, it lets me play that song. Oh, nice. So it, it's it's brought in the Spotify app so that you know what what is like I don't know if this is ranked any any which way or what, whatnot. But every time I click on a dot, it brings in that song. I think it's just a clip. Um, and I don't use Spotify, so I don't know all, all that much about it. But I just thought it was interesting that they they put a song to it, and then mm -hmm. they then you can listen to that song if you didn't know what it was. Um, so the, does the circle, if it becomes larger or smaller, will it mean anything? Does it mean anything? So... If I had to guess, although I don't know because I don't see any legend for that, we're currently looking at the energy audio feature. So right. perhaps the, the more energy you have, the bigger that, that little Christmas ball is. And it looks like it because if you see in the upper right-hand chart, there's a box of whisker there, and it's at the very – it's way, way, way there at the top for energy. Okay. It was, it was up so here. It, so it doesn't mean anything where the little bulbs are placed on the tree. I don't think so. Size, okay. Yeah, I don't think so. It's, so if you change from energy, what does it do? Like from energy to what? So if you want like acousticness. Oh. You know, it's got different like categories of types of audio features. Mm. Let's see how quickly it uh, transitions here. That's really cool. Um, you have uh, Aaron that one so people can see it on the chat. Oh, yeah. yeah. Put, put it. Put it in the chat. 
So anybody wants wants to look at it. Yeah, let me find the LinkedIn right here. Okay, so I, I put it in there. So we have the acoustic key on the right side. So yeah, so see. so like you can see like if whatever song you're you're hovering on, you can see on the right what it falls into. If it's at the way low end, mm. meaning there's it's not much acousticness. Um, you know, if I click if I click on that, then you can you can listen to that song. And, mm. you know, it's real poppy, so there's probably not there's not a lot of acousticness, but up here on this other end, it's probably all acoustic. Yeah. So yeah, I, I, just, I just thought that was super interesting. Um, oh, he says open definitions. I've not clicked on that before, so I don't know what that does. It will tell you what the categories are probably, right? I don't know. Yeah, there you go. It popped up there in a second. Yeah, kind of tells you what it is. What does acousticness mean? And it kind of gives you that, that yeah. uh, definition. I mean, that's, I think, great, right? For data visualization in particular, this is great because it tells you exactly if you don't know, if your yeah. audience doesn't know. Yeah, yeah. You know, we're, we're working with clients now where it's like, you know, they have these these codes and no one really knows what those codes mean outside of a small handful of people. The end user is not going to know what that code means. But we've been putting those help icons on. And when you hover on it, it tells you what those codes mean so that people are, are not going elsewhere to try to find that answer. Exactly. Right. I will really like that. Right, anything else on, on this one? Otherwise, I'll, I'll move on to the next. I anything the, else that you see? Like, of having the Spotify is really cool. I don't yeah. know if it makes too much sense. The the whole tree. Oh, oh, there's a there's a chart. Okay. So yeah, it oh. lets you select a view. So this is like the music key. So A through G sharp. Wow. Okay. If you're really into music and you you know what those mean, you know <laughs> this this might be kind of neat. Okay. So it let, it let the users select whatever they want, right? It's very, very friendly in that regards. This oh, one, I think, it just puts a dot out for all of them. I don't, I don't think it's anything in particular. It seems okay. pretty random. Very nice. Very nice. So we have uh, Dustin uh, from the. Uh, Chad, he says, what I do love about this through is that it showcases the power of Tableau auctions, um, actions, I'm sorry. And he says, um, playing a song from a dashboard, what's not to like? Uh, that's pretty cool. Yeah, that's right. I mean, it's like a playlist, right? So you can create your own playlist or have a playlist here and, and, and click on that and, and listen to the music. That's pretty cool. Yeah, Good I have, a, I have right. a dashboard out on my Tableau public profile that... Uh, it's it's a, an Illuminations dashboard, and I have also have a Harry Potter dashboard, and it, it has all the movies on this dashboard. And when you click on one of the movies, I, I've embedded a little window on the dashboard so you can watch the trailer from YouTube. And I really like that ability to, to stay in one place and get everything you need rather than having to click on something that goes to another tab or you don't know what this means, so you got to send an email to somebody. Um, so I just like the simplicity of trying to use these BI tools to, to give – the person that's using them, everything in one view, um, you know, yes. hidden here and 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 tricks to, to how to do that uh, are are best. But just having it all available at your fingertips without having to go anywhere else is is uh, appreciated. So, what is the the other one that you got? All right, this one is by um, the Florida Department of Highway Safety and Motor Vehicles in, in Tallahassee. You and I are in Florida, so I, I thought this was interesting. This is Thanksgiving citations. So it's not citations. <laughs> so I I don't ever use these bubble charts, but I thought it was a, a different way to to show the how big uh, that bubble is compared to the rest of them. Uh, mm. For the most parts, uh, you know, bubble charts can be replaced with with uh, with bar charts uh, and other things. But I I I liked it was not trying to be necessarily the the best method to do things, but just a different kind of way to to kind of grab people's attention. So it gives you the, those total citations for each year. And it looks mm -hmm. like it went down uh, last year, which is great. Uh, but it also lets you select the, the county you're in. So I'm in Orange County. So you can see unlawful speed was the number one for Florida. And in orange, mm -hmm. red lights. We got a lot of red light cameras, so that doesn't surprise <laughs> me. 
Uh, there's a toll, yeah, failure to pay required tolls. That that's a I can understand that as well. Uh, but you know, it's this isn't meant to like go through each little bubble and see what each little number is. It's to, to highlight the big things, the the, mo the most important things. And mm -hmm. um, I also appreciated that they the, the color scheme that they used here was kind of almost like colorblind type colors. So they're, they're not trying to put a single color for every right. single citation. Um, what do you think, Jane? Um, before I say anything, what do you think? I'm not sure about these bubbles. I mean, I, I do understand what you're saying, but about what you're saying about the uh, it, it's showing the, the largest things. Yeah. But I'm not sure if I still love the bubbles. I think it's because it's hard to know which one is the biggest. Like exactly. if you look here, there's like the darker blue. Oh, or, no, no, that's all right. Like here, if you look at the the orangey red versus mm -hmm. the gray, the dark gray, like which one's bigger? Um, it's hard to know. Mm -hmm. It'd be so that's 94 was... and that's 123. That's significantly bigger, but you can't really tell that. Exactly. Yeah. They're almost the same. They're almost the same to me. Yeah. It, like if it was numbered, maybe like top five, if top five was numbered or, or if like mm. there was a color scheme for the top five and then everything else was gray. I think, I think there's a, there's a way to do this. So, so colors or, or mm -hmm. more words can, can help. Definitely. The, the other thing is there is space. You have space there. There is space to do the, uh, a bar chart, for example, right. Going down, um, I think you have there, there's plenty of space there to, to like Jane said, maybe, maybe what we care is the top five. And that's, that's plenty of space there for top five. Um, because after you read the first bubble, then the other bubbles are, are becoming too hard to understand. Like they're just too, too similar, too close. Yeah. 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 I think that at least the, how I interpreted this was they weren't trying to be that specific. They want to mm -hmm. give you just a general sense of the citation. Mm -hmm. So look out. You can tell in this view there are one, two, three, four, five, four, five, or six mm -hmm. that are the biggest ones. So it, those mm -hmm. are the only ones that they care about. So to your point, maybe it's best to just put the top five. Do, you, do we, really, yeah. we really care about this passing posted sign hill curve? No, not really. Um, I, so. I do like what they did with the years. I think it's great, easy to understand. The years on top, the colors. Um, the other thing that I think is missing is the compared to what? Like, where's the variance between the years, right? Like, there's no yeah. variance. Yeah, um, you can put it right underneath and be. Yeah, it should be some variance here. So, so, you, so probably people will, um, will like to know, hey, I know it's going down from 73 to 69, but what is what is that? What, what is the variance right there? What is it? It's like 5%? I don't know. So yep. that would be nice to know. OK. Well, anything else? Otherwise, I'll go on to the next one. Mm. Yep. Next one's great. Go, go right. to the next one. Yes. All Let's right. What is this one? All right. This one is by Interworks. Um, so they, what they did was they, they give you a, an explanation of what this is, mm -hmm. how, how to use it. Um, I, I like that they, they start with a, just a block of, of text of this is how you read this dashboard. Okay. Uh, it's, not, it's not entirely difficult to understand. They, their home office is somewhere there in the middle. And they basically did this, this graph, which, which connects to the points where they, they donated money on behalf of their employees and where they were in the world. Mm. Now, you know, this isn't all that yeah. like interactive and, and insightful, but it does give you some context of like, you know, they, they did, they reached out to a lot of different places and you can see exactly how much it was. And like, what, what are they doing over here in Australia? Um, you can see how much they donated, click again to view their websites. So, so if I clicked on that dot, it could take me to there. So like, I wanted to know what, like that, I donate to that too, or I would like to donate to that. Mm -hmm. you can click on it and it'll take you to that link without having to go and find where this look where this is and what this this um this charity is so okay not, not a lot of this one uh, on this one just a, a different look on uh on how to present this in a, in a map form it makes me miss traveling seeing that map because it looks like flights <laughs> yes yeah i thought there were flights too when i was looking yeah. at it right um, I think this is good for transparency, right? Like you can see, like if you have a a thousand dollars, how is it thousand dollars, let's say, or a million dollars? How is it that it's uh, distributed through different 
charities. I do like that. So what happened when you hold, when you select an uh, organization from the list? Does it hold oh, that? So it oh, gives cool. you from from the from their headquarters to where that is. Mm. Okay. So like, it doesn't it doesn't like this feature doesn't do a, a whole lot. Mm -hmm. um, you know, it gives you some just direct connection from like where where that is. Uh, but you know, I like that there's there's not a lot of color on this. You know, they've specifically called out just a couple of colors, but they didn't overwhelm it with with un, unnecessary um, coloring. Okay, I'm just trying to understand myself. Is what is the what is the story that they they're trying to tell? Uh, they're trying to say. I mean, the only thing that I can think of is, okay, where is the concentration of the donations that we're making? Where is the concentration? Seems like to be, uh, what is that? East? You know, it's in the, in the U.S., a yeah. couple in Europe, got some on oh. West Africa, a couple in Australia. Exactly. So it just, uh, just tells me the concentration of those donations, but honestly, other than that, I'm not sure what is it that I'm trying to... To, to show here, I mean, what is the actual um, story that I'm trying to tell on this dashboard? I have my total donation, the organizations, the countries, but that's it. It's not... It's yes, not that's it. That's, it's, yeah. it's, a, it's simple. It's not supposed to be overwhelming with a lot mm -hmm. of information. I don't, you know, I think that's probably the goal here is just to say, hey, this is how much we've given back. Uh, this is the, you know, the number of organizations, this is the number of countries and, and, mm -hmm. and check this out. Here's, here's like kind of a map view of like where all of those are located. Okay. Yeah. But it doesn't give me, it would be nice if it would provide some of, uh, does it provide you more information about the actual organization? I think yes. When you click on it, right? Yeah. When you click on it, 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 it lets you link oh, okay, to exactly. the actual location. Yeah. And that'll take okay. you to the, to the, that donations website. Perfect. Okay. Okay. Great. All right. Yeah. Uh, next one. Okay, so I got one that well, I'll actually spend some time on. Mm -hmm. so let me just refresh this. So what is this specifically? So here we're talking about holiday spend. And on this one, they're, they're, they're more like telling a story. The, the, the graphs okay, are good. not real intense, and it takes a lot of focus to understand what they're talking about. Okay. So as you can see on the right-hand side of my bar here, like this, this scrolls down quite a ways. You know, so there's a couple of things that, that they wanted to, to tell people without having to squeeze it into a, a letter landscape size. Mm -hmm. And in this digital age, you know, things aren't printed out hardly ever. Um, you know, mm -hmm. some things might have to fit in PowerPoint. But outside of that, you know, your, your real estate space is however big your screen is. So is it a problem that you have to scroll down in order to follow along with this? If, if they're trying to tell a story, if you're trying to analyze data, that's a little different. But in this case, it's kind of a, like an infographic where they're trying to tell that story. So they've got, you know, a couple of colors, a uh, couple of things they wanted to point out. Uh, I, I like on this graph, they don't give you every number that's there on the tooltip. It just gives you the beginning and the end. Okay. So you can see that it's gone up significantly since 2004. Here in the purchase plans, you know, I don't know what these colors mean, but here it says gifts for family members in that same blue. So that made sense to me. I, I understood what that meant immediately. Now, it doesn't say what these other colors are. But when you hover on it, it does tell you what that is and what that average spend per person is there um, on, on that tool tip. So what what confused me a little bit was this number right here says 502. And in the paragraph, it says 502. But if I'm not mistaken, that's the same number that this should be. So I I'm, I'm probably didn't read it all that clearly to, to see if I understood it. But it seemed to me like those numbers should have matched. But you know, I didn't make it and perhaps I'm just reading it wrong. So next one is just non-gift holiday items. So they've got this again, like they did up here with this blue and yeah. this, blue, they matched specifically what you wanted to alert them to candy and food, $110. That's immediately, you can see that that's what this is for. Okay. Then they do the same thing up above. So if you hover on those, you can see what those categories are and how much was spent. Then you have other purchases. You can see a huge dip there. Mm -hmm. um, wow. For self or family. So I don't, you know, there's, it seemed like outside of that one, all these seemed 
okay, they seem to make some sense. This one almost needed a little more context because I didn't, like, why was mm-hmm. there such a dramatic decrease from mm-hmm. 2019 to 2020? Is it pandemic related? Probably. Uh, but they, they, they don't go into any kind of context of, of why um, it, it dropped so much. And if you're trying to tell this story of spending habits, it would be good when you have a dramatic change like that to at least annotate it or, or mention it somewhere of, of what could have caused it rather than people trying to figure that out on their own. Here we got demographics, just uh, male and female by the age group. Nothing, nothing fancy going on there. Shopping preference, majority still online. Now they colored this blue and all of these are blue. So even though it's just supposed to represent this bar, so perhaps they could have made these gray, make the rest of these gray. So they know specifically which one we're, we're looking at. What do you guys think? I think it's a little confusing. Could you scroll up a little bit? Let me do, uh, before you go there, I mean, I, th- I think this is super important. I mean, Ray had, fr- from the previous chart that you were showing, I I never, I never I didn't thought about this, and I really, really think it makes sense to make that one before, that you showed before, better, he says, potentially size the circle by donation amount and or color the charities by category. I really think that that could have made it so much better and easier to understand, right? Definitely. Yeah, I would bring it back up, but then I'd have to find the link for it. And I, I don't, I can't <laughs> it. don't worry. But I think that's that's a potentially so, so much easier to read if you color that by charity and the size by donation. That's that's correct. Um, when I started looking at this, I thought that this was uh, something related to politics. I don't know why. Because <laughs> <laughs> of the the red and the blue. Yeah, yeah the red and the blue. very political. Yeah, very political. I mean, I don't know. It was like, wow. I think there's a lot of space loss here. There's just too much space on the right. There's too much uh, words what? here. Yeah. So it says non-gift holiday items. So then uh, it's a little bit confusing. Like the the whole, the data, I can't imagine what the data would look like. Because, you know, it's saying first there's here are gift items and then here are non-gift items and then the next are purchases for self or family. Like, does this have to do with the candy slash food? Like, is the other purchases also included in the non-gift item or the the one above, or is it not? No. I, I just can't imagine what the data structure looks like. Um. So unless they had, you know, the, the a bunch of categories, right? And it was these four, but it mm-hmm. also included these four, uh, mm-hmm. and then other was probably maybe. So maybe they had eight, nine. Maybe mm-hmm. they had nine options. Do you are you spending any? How much are you spending on these nine items? Mm-hmm. Uh, and then they could bucket them here like that. But I I wouldn't have any idea. Does it does it have any filters? No. Okay, I think that's what it's missing. Because if, if it was me who was looking at this data or Jane, right? Think about it, Jane. If you could select some your specific filters that you want for you, like let's say that she yeah. wanted to make this more related to Jane, right? So Jane will say, okay, I want to select these filters. I am this age, this gender. I, I did some gift. I did not do these other things or I didn't purchase online. And if you provide those different filters and all of these filters to what Jane is interested in, it could be more related to what she wants to see. More helpful, I think. Yeah, we talked about personalization and having the ability to do that. You know, I, I this may not look anything like what I do. So mm-hmm. I immediately like, well, it's for whoever knows mm-hmm. and what, we don't know the data or whatever. But if to your point, if you have that ability to, to select okay. your gender and your age group, then you can see how closely you are with how everybody else is spending it in that in those same buckets. Mm-hmm. That could be. Um, okay. So it says, I have um, Dustin, he's saying, I do like the general idea of some quick business like this with one key takeaway listed to the right of each. So he likes the, you know, that is giving you those takeaways on the right. So those specific insights of each. Okay. Maybe 
I mean, I, it's true. I mean, it's it's a good idea too. It's just I think it's just that I think it's way long. Like maybe make it in a in a better format. And uh, what about those space that is the space that is lost all all the way around the ride? It's just I don't know. It maybe just seems like, a, like like mm -hmm. it's an infographic. You know, it's like mm -hmm. they if you have un, unlimited real estate rather mm -hmm. than trying to smash it all in a single view or two views. You know, let, let them scroll so they can follow the, the the story as it goes. This one just doesn't have the best story, but I I love infographic looking dashboards. Yeah, yes, yes, yes. So I think if this story was more like flushed out, it would be. I think there's a lot of potential here. Correct. And what what is this blue? Do you see this box and the, the white box on the, the the white chart? The, the this line chart here on the right. What is, why is it blue on the top? What's it blue? I don't understand that. Like, the, you, you see it, Aaron, on the right, the line chart? Just for pizzazz. Up there, like a little bit higher. You see that blue oh, on top? Yes. Like right there. What is the idea of that? I, mean, I don't know. Because they've got them on these down the left-hand side. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. back on the top. Back again, yeah. There's yeah, no reason for that. Mm. All right. I got one. Again, here in the left. Yeah. I got one. I got one more for you. We got eight minutes. We can squeeze it in. Yeah, go ahead. Go ahead. Look at this thing. Mm. So what is this? He's going to put it in the chat. I just put it in the chat. So what we're looking at is when people celebrate holidays. Oh, this is cool. So again, I've never seen anything like this and I love finding ones like this. It's a little harder to, to follow. It takes a little more studying, but I'm, I love the creativity of, of what people are able to do out here with these, these BI tools. So okay. each of these dots, if I'm not mistaken, is a, a, um, a day. I'll let it refresh. So each dot is, is a day. The size of the dot is the number of holidays celebrated on that day. You got the, the winter solstice and summer solstice here, uh, the spring and fall equinox is here. So if we like this one, that's the biggest one. And they can tell you there are six holidays and then here are them all. Mm. So I, I, I like what I like is that you can you can see the, the, the circles when there's more than one. So I believe these are these are nothing. Right. So they come up as blank. Uh, these are probably one and these are probably two. I, it's just a, it's a different way to look at a, a calendar, right? We're used mm -hmm. to using it as a, in the square format uh, over 12 months. And they, they just did that something a little different here. Um, and I, I just like, I like the artistic approach here that they took. Mm -hmm. Really cool. So if you go to December, let's go to December 25th or what, you know what I mean? Like, okay, can you find that? I see. Yeah, I'm, I'm going to find it. Three, four, twenty-five. Oh, right there. What's Only the one? Oh, this is interesting. That's interesting. Oh, Boxing what? Day. Boxing yeah, but like it, the, the definition then goes to what's considered a celebration. Is Boxing Day a celebration? <laughs> you know, and if it is, it'd be great if it told us where. Yes. Yeah. Countries or true. regions. Yeah, that would be great. So, 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 what you're saying is, it should it to make it even even better. It should have a filter where I can select the country. Let's say the country where I'm from. Let's say so. Somebody's looking at this. Say, oh, I'm I don't know from Australia. Let, let me select Australia and see, or or you know, or, or Canada, and I can see all of those uh, con, uh, celebrations. Right. Yeah, right. that would be nice. And I see that they're kind of using, they're using four colors, but I think if they just use three, what would be really great is, is if they colored by East, like if this is just a purely East holiday, purely West holiday, or on this day, there's both. I think if it's going to be East means West, they should, they should have some of that in here yeah. because right now, you know, you don't know if these are East or West or, yes. or anything. That's a good question. I wonder if that's how they, they did it. Because you can't tell what's east and what's west. Mm -hmm. I mean, based on color. No, and it doesn't look to be 
base. It doesn't look to be colored by east or west. It just looks kind of like it's just part of the color scheme. Yeah, I see like each of the colors are like the month. So like green is November, December is this blue, January is this, and then it just repeats red, blue, but then we have this yellow. Yeah. Hmm. I wonder if that's... Yeah, so did you see you're, you're writing something like the color needs some legend. Mm -hmm. I think there's needs some legend to understand the colors better. So they, do, do, do they really mean something, the colors or... Um, so you see, it says like they're saying different Eastern and Western traditions. So they maybe, could it be two colors? Just two colors? And then you can see between East and West. Um, maybe. But still, it's pretty cool. Um, I just think it needs some filters just to get it to understand it better. Um, let me see what else. Where is where is this data coming from? Uh, does it say here on the left down? Is, is so it says page? it's a link to a Wikipedia page. Okay. Which would also be nice if that was clickable, so you could actually go to it, but it's not. So it, uh, Dustin says, "I agree. We how cool will it be to show a best and tooltip to show concentrations of where the holiday is celebrated." They got yeah. plenty, plenty of room there, and I know you can put maps inside of tooltips. Mm -hmm. you yeah, can, you could easily put the country in there. Yeah, could you easily put the country, could put more context. Um, I mean, this is a great, great visualization to start, and then, but you can still make it for sure a little bit better. Um, I'm trying to understand too. Okay, exploring kind of the most common days of celebration 2021. Um, so, oh, okay, okay, that's the winter. So, is that is that in like it's in English and what is an underneath is that? Japanese or Chinese, maybe? I'm not sure. Uh, I think it said here the equivalent Chinese names right there. Chinese names, okay. Well, that's great. I think that was a great idea. It looks but cool. It, yeah. Huh? It looks cool. I mean, like just looking at it, the colors and everything. Yes, it looks really cool. I like the colors, um, the circle. Wondering how they were able to map all of that was probably difficult to map. Um, I mean, I imagine the data, the data yeah. itself, it was probably hard to map. Yeah. But it looks really cool. I mean, I think it's great that you can see, uh, you know, this type of data, holidays data is, is a great data to, you know, to practice data visualization, but also to have fun uh, in relation to data visualization. I mean, there's so much out there when we were looking we were overwhelmed with how many things you can find. You can find anything pretty much. I mean, how many Christmas trees people are purchasing? How many, I mean, how many, how, many, how much money they're spending, uh, transportation and anything you can imagine it's out there related to this data. So this is a great data to, to visualize or to just play with data related to holidays. Yeah, it's great, great. So we're almost done, unfortunately. We're almost done. Uh, we're pretty much done to, to this week's uh, three at three show. Uh, thanks, Jane, for being with us today. We love the two visualizations that you brought in. Uh, they were super cool. Love the animations. Uh, we learned so much from the animations for, for sure. And I appreciate everyone in the chat, uh, Dustin Ray, and everybody who's, that is there um, for all your. Um, you know, your comments and anything that uh, you provided today to us. So it's super cool to to have different conversations and also perspective. Um, like it says here, you know, data meaning the company that we work on and, and that we're allowing us to, to do this, it's hiring. So if anybody have any data visualization expertise or Altrix uh, expertise, uh, let us know, please apply. Uh, we're hiring, hiring right now um and also next week we have a full house on next wednesday at 3 p.m uh we have personal finance and the reason why we wanted to talk about that is because a lot of people are you know thinking about next year 
my personal finance, uh, putting together, you know, what, what, what I'm going to do with my money next year. So we're going to have data visualizations related to that. We have three great experts next week uh, that know a lot about this data and they're going to be with us. Aaron is going to be on vacation. So I'm going to be by myself here, uh, but you're welcome to, to attend and hope to see you next week. And thank you, Jane, again for, for being with us today. And like I said, she have, when is your show? Is it every week, right? Is it every week? Every week. It's usually on Thursdays. Thursdays. Yes. Okay. So check Jane Lee, uh, Bislip, Happy Hour. Yes. Great content. Please uh, follow her and follow uh, Bislip. They have wonderful content there. They, they discuss a lot of data visualization, how you create them, how, how you can make them better and things like that. Uh, they actually show you step by step. So please attend and, and follow her. And thank you for being here. Yeah, thanks for having me. Thanks, Jane. Yeah, thanks, Jane. And happy, happy holidays to everyone. Thank you guys. And, Merry Christmas. Yeah, and uh, wish you everyone a better year next year. It was not a bad year. I, I don't consider 2021 a bad year. So I'm, I'm pretty sure next, next year is going to be even better. So thank you, everyone. And have a wonderful holidays. And be safe out there. Be safe. Thank you so much. Bye-bye. <laughs> Bye. Bye.